and this one's going to be magical. Government intervention uh, per unit welfare analysis take one. As Cartech li likes to say, this is going to be a one take wonder. Oh, what's the other word, Cartech? We need to be saying easy peasy, right? I mean, this one really is easy peasy. I mean, if you messed up on this, then you are a horrible economics teacher. So, if I need more than one take, you can classify me as horrific. All right, this is going to be easy. Y'all ready? All right, now, we're good, right? This is it. Boom. Wait. wait. Oh, sorry. You, you forgot government again. No, there's no third party. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah I'm not even not doing, not doing an externality. So no, okay. this is like actually like I'm going backwards. Like this is actually not the next one sequentially. I'm almost talking to y'all like I'm talking to Steve right now. Steve, I'm sorry the way I talk to you. It's kind of weird. I know. I'm, anyhow, this is it. I mean, really, this is not how I talk if that was Steve. Steve! Yes! No, not, not quite like that. All right, that's a lot of setup for this one. Here it goes. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We are on government intervention per unit taxes. We're going to do a welfare analysis. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just cut to the end on this one, okay, guys? This welfare analysis is going to say that the per unit tax that we impose, per unit taxes, cause dead weight loss, that they hurt social surplus. So let me stop right there, okay? Certainly they can. When do they hurt social surplus? When we have a market where there's no externalities and pretty much everything in the market is functioning really well, okay? If that's the case, per unit taxes absolutely hurt social surplus. But in later videos, you're gonna see that per unit taxes can actually help social surplus. So here's the big thing, for this video, we are in perfect competition. We have a market that is working well. There's no externalities. And now government levies a per unit tax on this good. And you're going to see social surplus get hurt. So let's get going. I've got a uh, graph up here. I got my welfare analysis just really quickly. Status quo column, policy one column, and the change. And we've got some different groups. What are the groups we're going to be looking at? Well, of course, we're going to be looking at the consumer. So consumer surplus and the producer, producer surplus. And since it's a tax, it being imposing a tax, the government's going to get revenue. So we need to put the government up there. Now I've got my double line. Anytime you see that double line, that means, hey, we got societal surplus down here. Societal surplus. You'll see me that, you know, put different words right here. I'll sometimes put societal surplus, sometimes societal well-being, sometimes society, pretty much all the same thing. Over to the graph. I'm going to use the tax wedge to do this, okay? But trust me, if you just shifted the supply curve based on the per unit tax, you'd get the same result. It'd just be a little messier. So I'm going to use the tax wedge. I'm going to say the per unit tax, I don't know about that much, okay? So that tax wedge comes in, it's going to slide into place, and there is my tax wedge. Now let's get this thing labeled up. First, I'm gonna ignore the tax wedge for a second. I'm gonna say, well, what would happen if the market was left alone because we've got no tax? If that was the case, simply the intersection of supply and demand, they would give us our price market and our quantity market. Now, once again, that tax wedge has been put in place. So the price the consumer is going to pay is going up, price consumer. And the price the producer is going to receive, otherwise known as their per unit revenue, is going down. And I'm just going to bring this down right there and put Q tax. Now, let's just label this thing up, okay? A, B, C, D, E, F. It's going to be a pretty straightforward welfare analysis. So, no tax, status quo. What would be the consumer surplus? Remember, no tax. If that was the case, price market would prevail. The price market would be both the price consumer and the price producer if there was no tax. So price consumer, demand curve, plus A, plus B, plus C, pretty straightforward, plus A, plus B, plus C, producer surplus. Once again, price market, that's the per unit revenue. There's the marginal cost, right, right there. The area in between, D, F, and E, all go into the producer. So plus D, plus E, plus F. Government, well, if we have no tax, they're not getting any money. So government, nothing here. Sigma, point it up. 
So that's what we'd get if we had no tax. But now we come in and we put in a per unit tax. This is government intervention. They put a per unit tax in there. Now the tax wedge is viable. Now it's doing something, right? So this right here, price consumer page. Price consumer demand curve, okay? The consumer's only gonna buy that much. That's the quantity demanded, plus A. That's all we're getting, plus A. Look at that consumer surplus shrinking. The producer, there's their per unit revenue after they pay the tax, right? After they pay the tax, that's the per unit revenue. Let me just remind you of that, right? Consumer hands this vertical distance of money into the producer's hand. The producer turns around and pays that vertical distance to the government, leaving the producer with that vertical distance, okay? So PP, after tax per unit revenue, right there. Marginal cost, F, plus F. That's what the producer is getting now. But the government, they're getting some positives, right? They're getting tax revenue. This vertical distance right there per unit tax, how much is gonna get sold all the way to Q tax. So this vertical distance all the way to Q tax, leaving the government with plus B and plus D. So plus B plus D, sigma up, all right? Sum that up. So we've done all the hard work, we just gotta do this last column and it's pretty simple and it gives us all the results that we want. So your professor oftentimes is gonna say, hey, show me how the different groups are impacted by something. So how are the different groups impacted by a tax? Per unit tax, consumer definitely hurt, okay? Minus B, minus C. So once that per unit tax is put in place, they lost a lot of surplus. Minus B, minus C, consumer definitely hurt. How about producer? Same situation, right? Per unit tax in place, they only get F. They lost D and E. So minus D, minus E. Producer also worth, worth off, worse off. And that allows us to remind ourselves of something. Per unit taxes, who do they hurt? They hurt both the consumer and the producer. They share the benefit, not always equally, but they share the benefit as long as demand or supply is not perfectly inelastic, okay? As long as we got any elasticity in both of those curves, the burden is going to be shared. Hopefully I said burden the whole time. Now, government, what's gonna happen to them? The Delta column, they're gonna get plus B, plus D, okay? Of course, they got nothing pre-tax, they get plus B, plus D after the tax. So now you've got a lot of the answers you're probably gonna be asked for. You can say, what's the impact on these three groups? But you're also gonna be asked, what's the impact on society, okay? So we're gonna sum these up. The B's cancel, the D's cancel, negative C, negative E drops down, negative C, negative E, okay? Remember, I'm just summing the above. So I've got like summing what's right here. Positive B, negative B, cancel. Negative D, positive D, cancel. Negative C, negative E, they drop down, they're right there. Guess what? When that tax is imposed, society is worse off. Remember, that's what we said was gonna happen, right? We impose a tax, social surplus goes down by negative C, negative E, which is absolutely the case. If we have a market that is functioning well, no negative externalities, no positive externalities, this would be the case the tax is going to hurt us. Anyhow, hope that made sense to you. There's the welfare analysis, there's the table, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for turning in.